Hello everyone, welcome to Rural Water Resources Management, NPTEL course week 10, lecture 1. We have been looking at water management issues in rural areas, especially due to the increase in domestic agriculture and industrial demand. And we have been noticing that most of the regions are going to be highly stressed in the near future because of the business as usual scenario and climate change impacts. So it is very important to understand and manage the rural water resources properly, especially for agriculture and domestic livelihoods. Let's look at what we saw in week nine. Because of these issues, as I mentioned today, there is a need for infrastructures to enhance the water resources. Enhancing the water resources can be of two types. One is the engineered infrastructures and natural or nature-based infrastructures. In week nine, we looked at rural water resource management infrastructure engineered specifics on how to improve the management of water. We looked at specifically the big concrete and infrastructures that are needed. For example, dams and canal networks. We looked at how we could establish a dam command area and a catchment area. Catchment is where the water is caught to be supplied to the dam. And then the release of the dam could be your command area. Then we looked at the canal systems as a part of your dam network as an engineered solution to bring the water to the farm. We also noted that the farmers may not be in a low lying elevation, thereby pushing water down. So you may have to lift it up. And so th that is where we looked at check dams and lift irrigations, which are more decentralized in manner. We looked at Ganges water machine for groundwater decentralized recharge and more uh, in depth of uh, how do you get water into the deep deep aquifers of the groundwater. For that we looked at groundwater recharge shafts and managed aquifer recharge schemes. In this week we'd be doing mostly the similar focus areas and theme areas but we will be looking at nature-based solutions. So it is again, rural water resource management infrastructures, but it is nature-based solutions. Specifics on how to water uh, manage in these scenarios is going to be given by rainwater harvesting through natural methods, natural infrastructures that can be used to store the water like depressions and lakes, vegetation induced infiltration. How do you enhance the groundwater recharge through vegetation induced infiltrations? And more importantly, afforestation and agroforestry. So let's jump into this week's lecture. Given the water issues, what are the available infrastructure we have? So I've given an, a, a quick example of the water issues in India especially for rural India. So what are the available infrastructures? Let's look at it. We did look at this definition of water security. Okay. And in the definition of water security, we had the four pillars, which is drinking water, economy, uh, water for econo economic uh, upliftment, ecosystem services, and resilience. So where do you think nature-based solutions fit more? Yes, uh, it, all these infrastructures would have to enhance drinking water supply, provide water for economic stability, and provide resilience to climate change, for example, droughts and floods. But more specifically, it has to be providing the ecosystem services because you are a nature-based solution. The drinking water 
tanks, uh, underground uh, tanks, sumps, etc., are clearing the land, clearing the soil, putting concrete, etc., thereby reducing the ecosystem services. I hope you understood last time when I discussed this sec water security theme. We have to be careful that if we do engineering, your ecosystem services are going to be disturbed. Big dam is there, the water flows. And what happens is water is stored, but then downstream the ecosystem services are compromised. So that is where we need to be careful on releasing the water in a timely fashion for nature-based ecosystem services. So today's lecture or this week's lecture will be mostly focusing on the ecosystem services. Yes, it will go through all of it, all the four themes, uh, but most importantly, it will look at where does rural water management, which is nature-based solutions, help the ecosystem services and more stability to the ecosystem. So now there are two types of rural water harvesting networks and rainwater harvesting networks. Okay. So let's look at the two types of rainwater harvesting using nature-based solutions. So the first theme we're going to look at is capturing the rainfall and then using it for different aspects. So how can we do rainwater harvesting? Surface runoff rainwater harvesting is the first theme where you capture the rainfall after the runoff has been generated. Mostly to store rainwater for future use, diversion of the water. So rainfall hits on the roof, plants, trees, or the road, and then it turns into runoff. Then you capture the runoff um, for future use uh, using diversion, uh, ponding, channelizing, etc. Or water for agriculture, livestock, domestic use. But if you pond it, you have to be using it before the evapotranspiration losses. So that is the first type of rainwater harvesting where you, you capture the rainwater and use it for surface applications, be it storage or be it uh, applications such as uh, agriculture, which is on the surface. But there is another type of rainwater harvesting also, which you can do groundwater recharge using rainwater harvesting wherein you convert from surface to groundwater because you're capturing the water and instead of letting the surface water uh, runoff to generate, you are pushing the water into the groundwater. Once the water is infiltrated, it can move further due to gravity via percolation and increase the groundwater storage. So aquifers can be a storage unit because um, you have uh, a big groundwater storage unit under the ground in porous spaces, the, the space between the solid, the sand uh, particles, you have spaces where water can store. So those spaces collectively can be a storage um, and it can be a leaky system also because once you build a water table, it will start flowing from high potential to low potential to the rivers, streams, or even your oceans, etc., as base flow. If you look at the traditional methods for uh, rainwater harvesting, most of them were having this groundwater ideology in the background. For example, you would have a village tank, village pond, etc., where all the street water would be channelized to go to this pond and lake. But the pond would not be lined underneath, whereas water would be just going down as infiltration. There was much less use for agriculture, like capturing the water, putting it into the pond and agriculture because there was no pumps. They would use it for domestic use like drinking, bathing and your animal uh, washing, etc. But not much. New methods are rarely implemented in rural India. If you look at it, if you go there, it's more traditional based knowledges and less uh, newly applied methods. However, in the recent visits, I'm also seeing that the old traditional methods are not maintained well. 
if you go back to the previous lectures uh, uh, over the weeks, we have been debating that if they don't maintain, it is a big loss and they lose the system. Okay. So let's look at the nature based rainwater harvesting. Call it natural rainwater harvesting or nature based. The, uh, the question is are you using less concrete, less construction? for rainwater harvesting. I would say zero, zero construction, etc. But still, you have to do some movement of stuff. Uh, so there is uh, more nature based solutions. And you would also use natural settings, not leveling the field, not creating buns, etc. It is all in a naturally built. Okay. So let's see uh, what is the benefits of natural uh, rainwater harvesting and we look at some examples this week. It is less engineered An example or, or that is less land is cleared, less concrete is poured on the ground, less uh, need for concepts of designs etc. Okay, so if you're having uh, for example uh, a land um, You're having a land uh, and you have uh, you're wanting to store the rainwater you don't clear this land you don't make it straight where which is done in the engineered method and no trees and uh, uh, plants are lost okay still keep them you would try to build storages in between the existing nature's uh, benefits and nature's parameters rather than removing it and making dams and check dams. So how do you evolve together is nature-based solution. Moving on, use of existing topographic features. The first thing is you're not leveling the field. As I said, the undulations, the uh, up and low of the topography is preserved. Example slope. You have a slope, you don't make it straight or uh, dig it more deep and then pour all the water in. So now you're going to get an idea that these are not big systems. Nature based solutions are more smaller, more decentralized, and localized. This is what the ancestors did, the traditional methods easier to maintain and you are not stopping a lot of water which could be of use for others. You are recharging small volumes. You are also bringing more water from outside um, the, the rainfall and channelizing etc and bringing it into these small ponds. You are not clearing the land. You are not um, making the land straight, etc. So basically all the land, all the vegetation, etc. is preserved. You're just making some small uh, changes uh, and also maybe bringing some nature, uh, native species and you are putting it into these uh, structures. Less people relocated. This is very important. You're not asking people to leave the land and go because you're going to have a dam. You're going to be in between the houses, in between the villages, how can you do it? So one quick example would be this. So if you look at it, the slope is not compromised. Look, the slope is not taken away. The slope is slope. So I would I would say that uh, I would, uh, for example, you could say, oh, why don't we make it deeper? Why don't we straighten it so that the water stays in here? No. So that will be more engineered. Why can we make uh, a wall which is more cement and uh, concrete? No, that will be more engineered. So what do you want is something which is very nature based. And here you could have seen that the land has been uh, identified as a slopey land. A small uh, pebble rock based dam is created, okay, wherein water can go in and store. There is also a small dug well, which is dug just removing some soil out. That's it. All these dug wells could be uh, 
kind of a between the nature based and engineer because you're not putting too much of engineering and you're not clearing big land okay so there is a bund and here you could have because of the water even if water stays there all the plants would die so you could remove some of the grass not the trees look at it the trees are kept as is and people are not relocated so once water gets stored it gets to infiltrate more and by infiltration it can recharge these wells in other locations what could be the compact difference between impact difference sorry between the structure and the engineer what i'm asking is um, how much of water would be recharged by these kind of systems compared to a dam or a pond or a recharge pit okay is the question so do you think there will be much differences yes these are more slow and the volume is more less because you're preserving the environment you're not clearing the land if i had cleared this land and made a big pond or uh, an embankment with all these material i would have more water to store but i didn't do it right what i did is rather i preserved the slope i preserved the condition by using the local materials and i infiltrated the water this is what has to be taken by nature based solutions it's easy to dismantle also just think about it. you just remove the boulder let the water to flow and this system can reproduce into a forest or a grassland like this like quickly however if you do it with engineered systems they will not re bounce back to the original state it will take long time so the impact is high but understand that it takes time for clearing you are losing some features in engineered whereas less features are lost in the nature based solutions let's take a dam which can be a nature based solution and less impactful on the surrounding so the other aspect is the nature based solutions are less negatively impacting the area even though the water is also lessly a low recharge is happening low storage is there however the impact on the ecosystem on the nature is less this could be the same by using an infrastructure with some features to consider nature let's take a leaky dam for example what is a dam a dam has to store water it should not have leaks it has a gate where you can open send the water it has a channel where water can be released but what is a leaky dam it is purposely made to leak from the walls rather water is stored water comes and gets collected and it is leak like constructed very leaky so that water can still pass through so you have some water yes but then water can still pass through so look at this book from fao and the images you could see that storage structures that are purposely made to leak you're bringing the rocks and making these uh, step dams and making sure that water can pass through and if water passes through it gets to recharge and uh, you know uh, get more water to the ground loose construction and relatively small if you look at the construction itself it is not big as a big dam so nature based solutions are small and loosely constructed so easily people can construct it just bring all the rocks and then make it if you think about it this is how the natural setting the animals and uh, small insects will also do they make something just bring some materials like a bird building a nest uh, that is not a construction right even though it does make a nest by bringing twigs and uh, uh, making a weaved uh, nest it is not called a constructed nest it does not impact the nature much same way here you are bringing all these you are using wires for example steel wires to hold on to the rocks and the water goes slowly okay wire materials to hold rather than cement think about it if you use cement water cannot pass 
but you use steel wires that can actually hold the rock so that the water can pass. The major aim is to slow down the water, recharge the groundwater and reduce soil erosion. Because when water flows fast, there is a lot of soil erosion. Whereas the recharge would take time, okay? So uh, to slow down. So if you slow down the water, you can get more recharge. The height thickness uh, given by FAO, which is just one meter, not too high, just one meter, and thickness is around 0.7 meters. So you can easily collect the local materials. I said the nature based solutions have local materials. You don't have to bring cement. Uh, from outside. So the wire, yes, the wire, you may not get it inside, but you can see the point. It's not fully constructed. And you could see that all the area can still get water because of this, and it is going to enhance the nature of biodiversity. You can make it also cascade as I was showing in the engineered system, like a check dam. So whatever approaches that we used for check dams can still work here. Importantly, it is leaking. So more water will pass through the check dam. Okay. Like this. So you build one um, uh, leaky dam and then this water will go to this one, this water will go to this one. So slowly, slowly it ponds and then water moves. Okay. Uh, so if you look at a check dam uh, cascading impact in a constructed manner, the water would actually stay in one dam fully. It has to be fully coming to the brim level, then it goes to the next, then it goes to the next. But here, if, since you have rocky, leaky material, water would go, stand, and then still continue for the flowing down, even though the full dam is not reached, and then goes down, goes down again. So this is one type of um, materials that you could use to construct leaky infrastructures so that water is always flowing. You're not totally taking the water out, but there is a lot of nature-based solutions. So there are a lot of specific treatments as given by FAO. So this manual I'm sharing, uh, which is the uh, chapter three, uh, the link is given uh, below. You can go and check a lot of materials uh, that are relevant for these treatment measures. So treatment as in what type of uh, check dams can you build using the nature solutions. So you can build loose stone that we saw in the previous one, boulder check dams, big, big rocks piled behind one another, okay. Brush fills, so you can have these dams and inside the dam you can put some soil and grow some brushes uh, or like small, small plants, okay. So they will fill the, the space, so the leakage would be there but even more reduced. So if you have 20% uh, water leaking in the loose sand, you'll have only 5% in the brush fill, whereas it is 0% in a cemented uh, check dam. Earth plugs can be done. Here you put, instead of cement and concrete, you can put in soil that can be there. So soil is not totally impervious, right? Water can still pass through. So those kind of earth plugs you can put, and most importantly, they don't harm the nature. So, for example, the check dam is broken. What do people do? They just leave everything, go to a next location. What happens to the rock, the cement? It doesn't degrade. Whereas here, earth plugs, brush fills, everything will degrade and then become soil again. So that is also what is called more as a nature-based concept. If you let it uh, go away or not use it, it will still bounce back into one of the nature products. For example, I have a steel uh, bridge. If the steel bridge falls down, what would happen? The steel is steel. It's just rusted maybe 1000 years, maybe 500 years. It's just going to be as a steel and slowly rust away. Okay. Whereas if you take a wooden bridge, if it falls, Within 10 years or uh, five years, it will degrade, uh, go back as uh, soil carbon, get uh, taken up by the plants, and then live as another uh, living organism. Okay. So, woven wire check dams, and we have seen that in the last brushwood um, uh, check dam, where you can make a check dam using wood rather than rocks and, and pebbles. 
uh, log check dams, big, big logs can be treated and then put. All these are nature-based solutions. So you see here how you are coming out of using bricks and stone and mortar uh, rather than you're using earth plugs and rocks and stones. So this is the example, first example I would like to uh, consider where you have um, a rock check dam, okay? rock based check dam and inside it there is some earth soil which has been inserted and along the inserting you put seeds, seedlings, small plants. What happens is the plants would let the roots go in. So once the roots go, the soil is held tight. So even if water comes, it won't wash away the soil totally, it won't wash away the plant. But slowly the water will be released. So here's how you convert a concrete system. So plant cannot grow in concrete, right? When we one on the walls, you would see, but not exactly as a full plant, but here it can grow fully uh, and still uh, work as a dam, okay? Here it is just using big, big boulders rather than a concrete and in between you don't have anything. So water will just flow through as a leaky uh, stone dam. So what we have seen here is we've taken only one concept as check dam and then we have seen how we could build it on a location by not clearing the land, by not um, um, making it leveling uh, level through uh, concrete networks or, or bringing a bulldozer and making it straight. You're making small nature-based check dams and when I say nature-based, it has to be built using nature concepts rock stones also are included when you convert rock and stone to a cement that is not included because you're engineering here we are just using the concepts and also most importantly wood uh, and forest material to build these kind of networks once you build that so that is the first part you have a nature and nature based solution the next part of nature based solution is is it completely storing the water or is there some aspects that can help in release of water? There is no engineering, there's no valve to open and close. So water can still flow down using gravity, uh, but at a much lower pace. So as I said, all these studies have been testing all these and looking at different methods to evaluate these um, check dams and traditional methods. Uh, which were lost during the previous centuries. Why was it lost? Because they didn't want to let the water go and they didn't want to manage it. If you engineer it, the management time is less because it will stay there for a long time. The rocks are not loose, so why would they move? But if you pile up the rocks and then water comes, it will slowly lose out, right? It's like building a castle on a beach. Uh, if you build it with rocks and plastic, it will stay even if a wave comes. But then if you build it with the beach sand and then make a small puddle, then water comes and then it moves away, right? So each time there is good maintenance, you can re rebuild it again quickly, but um, it's less expensive, uh, time consuming, those kind of aspects. So if you have the time, if you have the labor for the people, through the people, uh, it is always best to have nature-based solutions. In fact, big, big countries and developed countries like Singapore, Malaysia, they are getting into these nature-based solutions so that, yes, they store the water, but also they don't harm the environment because they want to store the water. With this, I will be happy to show more examples from the next class. I will see you in the next class. Thank you.